All right, everybody. Welcome to Real Talk, episode four with San Diego Steve, uh, where we seek to provide as much value as possible to the San Diego military community and anyone moving to or out of San Diego. Um, our guest today is an Air Force veteran and successful real estate investor, uh, Charlie Cameron. Charlie has transitioned from his military service to a thriving career in real estate, uh, creating a robust portfolio that includes residential living, uh, <laughs> residential assisted living facilities, uh, short term rentals and more uh, by harnessing the power of automation and task prioritization. He's mastered the art of work like Valange, pr proving that you can achieve financial success uh, without compromising family time. Uh, thanks for being here, Charlie. Steve, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, Charlie, I, I want to start where uh, you share a common thread with a lot of people that um, I serve um, as a real estate agent, um, but writ large in the community in San Diego, and that's in your military service. Um, talk to me about your time in the Air Force, what got you into real estate, and uh, just kind of your ground one story. Yeah, um, I did what any poor college kid does and said, yes, yeah, sir, sign me up uh, for free college. You know, so I did the engineer for ROTC kind of thing for your commitment. Um, thought I would get out after that, but I was having too much fun doing weapons development for the Air Force that uh, plus they sent me to Holloman. So I really wanted to get out of there. So I took the next assignment and I took the next assignment. Eventually I ended up at the uh, at the beach here in Destin, Florida um, and uh, did 11 years doing mostly kind of cool weapons development type activities, tests and, and acquisitions for the Air Force. Um, during that time, I have, I've always kind of been interested in, in investing. I kind of got more into it while we were stationed in Ohio. Um, <clears throat> at the time, it was all mutual funds and that kind of shenanigans. And, you know, I was much less bright about investing at the time. And uh, a buddy of mine was like, you know, an Air Force buddy of mine said, well, why don't you get into real estate investing? And I, I did the while we were at a bar, right, brings up the question. And I was like, that's stupid. I don't want to fix toilets. Right. I had that mindset, just like everybody does when, when you talk about real estate. And um, and then he sent me an article and it was about the for profit centers of real estate. And uh, and then I read it and I was like, wow, that totally blows stocks out of the water. And then I, of course, found bigger pockets then just went down the rabbit hole on podcasts for, you know, eight months and then emerged uh, above the surface and purchased two fourplexes as my first investment. And then it was kind of off to the, the races from there. Wow. So you jumped right into it, into to multifamily. There was no there was no in between. No. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd listen to so much that it just seemed like, hey, if I'm going to scale this thing and it, it, to me, I was looking at it as, all right, wife, wife is also active duty. You know, we're going to work for 20 years. And then after that, our income's going to be cut in half or actually a little bit less. How do I replace that other piece of it? Because a, a TSP or a Roth IRA ain't going to cut it because I can't touch that till I'm 60. I have no option here except for going back to work for another 20 years to replace that. And that just didn't sit right with me. Like, you know, I've, I've worked with a, mostly civilians in my career. And a lot of them are, you know, retired military gone civil service or contractor and they have to work into their 60s to retire i was like that that just doesn't sit well with me like i want to enjoy life now um, i also would like to enjoy life in my 40s after retiring from the military um, so for me the goal was hey replace the active duty portion of both of our incomes using real estate so what's the fastest way i could do that at the time it looked to me like it was value add multifamily um, and so I listened to a lot of the podcast. My favorite one was the Jake and Gino one where they talked about scaling up like 300 units. I listened to that probably four times and said, I'm going to buy the biggest multifamily I can buy with the monies I can scrape together. Um, and so, so I'd, I'd been evaluating deals. I went to meetups, like step one, go to the meetup, right? Meet people, understand, meet lenders, meet agents, figure it out. Surround yourself with the right people doing the right things. And I'd actually seen these two fourplexes in uh, Fairborn, Ohio, before I went saw them and went, ah, ooh, ah, ee, no, not right for me. It went under contract. And I was like, dang it. And um, while my daughter was being born <laughs> at the Wright Patterson Hospital, um, uh, it popped back up. And <laughs> I was like, 
I called, I called my agent. I was like, hey, is this, is this, can we do this? He's like, yeah, man, let's make an offer. So I put an offer in. Um, and sure enough, uh, you know, a day or two later, we went under contract on this thing. Um, that one was, you know, the rents were average 290 a door. Like I figured even I couldn't mess that up. Right. So, um, so, so there we go. So the, so we closed, uh, and my one month old daughter was at the, at the closing. And, um, and then I went straight to the property and fished mummified squirrels out of a HVAC unit. It was, that was my very first activity in real estate. Wow. So what did, uh, what did you learn along that way, along the process, uh, between, Hey, realizing you need to take action, um, and put an offer in, uh, when you saw the opportunity come back up. So there was, it sounds like there was a little bit of FOMO there at first and that made you realize like, Hey, I should do this, um, to actually getting into that first deal and what you learned in your first, uh, set of ownership there. Yeah, it totally. It could have gone the other direction. We were actually under contract on a duplex before, the inspection was absolutely atrocious and we backed out and I could have become the investor that never invested. Right. And so it, it, it was key to me that I was going to have to do one. Like I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And that's so true for me. And basically everything in life is, Hey, I'm not going to know if this is going to work out for me unless I actually do the thing. Can't just look at the thing. Can't just talk about the thing. Can't just educate myself on the thing. I have to do the thing. Um, and so I, I was like, I, I just have to do a real estate investment. Why I went with eight units, I couldn't really say. I, I could afford it, um, barely. And then, uh, you know, I ended up having to renovate multiple units and put quite a bit of work into them. But um, I was like, I'm going to self-manage this thing. I'm going to just figure this out, um, get my hands dirty so that I know when I'm a step above that, when I hire a manager, I'll know exactly what to do. So for me, it was it's all about, you know, I, I think for anyone, this has to be true. You can't just... You have to actually do it to know if you're if you're going to be good at it. Worst case, okay, it doesn't work out. You sell the thing a few years later, it naturally appreciates. Fine. So, you, so real estate wasn't for you. That's okay. Um, but I think if you're if you're not willing to try the thing, um, you know how are you going to know if you can be stratospherically successful in that thing? For me, it was like, hey, I need an option besides just the the, the TSP. This looks like the best one. I've got to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... If, uh, if listeners go back to episode two, we, we talked to Donald Appleberry and uh, he's stratospherically, uh, stratospherically successful here in San Diego as, as you are um, in the markets that you've invested in or you personally with your family. And, and Charlie is my day one mentor, I should say. Charlie uh, Charlie's actually the one that um, I said, hey, I knew I wanted to get involved in real estate and uh Charlie talked about surrounding himself with the right people and he showed me, showed me in. Um, but a commonality between what you just said and, and uh, Donald's advice in episode two um, was you're going fast. You're breaking things is what he said. Go fast, break things. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and what you did at your first investment, your first step along the way um, was just take action. And one of the things that um, one of the things that you mentioned that I kind of wanted to dig in a little bit more is um, where you started going into meetups and where you said you really need to surround yourself with the right people, with the right team um, for someone that, you know, is maybe doesn't have a Charlie in their life to show them what the right people looks like. Um, but they come across this this episode. What what can you tell them? What does right look like uh, with regard to team, with regard to you know, everyone that goes into helping you make uh, real investment, real estate investment decisions. Yeah. So real estate's definitely a team sport and I, I it just gets more and more true for me every single day. Um, especially, you know, I think ev just except for one house, I think everything I own is a partnership with others at this point. Um, and you can just accomplish so much more with other folks that, you know, have the same mindset as you and the same values and goals than you can on your own. A lot of people have that mindset like, ah, ooh, I want to hold on to my little piece of the pie and I don't want to share that with others because now I'm losing more for me. When in reality, when you work with others, you can expand two, three, 10 X faster than you can by yourself. And so it's definitely something you got to kind of break the mold on because we're so used to uh, hold on to your, your thing. Right. When, when really we can just hold hands and, and go together and, you know, whatever picture of that you, you as you will. But, um, um, 
you could certainly crush it more as a team. And so for me, you know, I just found a bigger pockets, go found a meetup. And then I went to the meetup, joined the Facebook group and just started networking. Go, go, go meet people, learn things, do stuff. Um, and then started, hey, hey, you know, whoever can I take you to lunch? Hey, whoever can I take you to lunch? Right. Um, and just get to know people and, and see if you can provide value. Right. A lot of these people, you know, the people who've been in it a long time are very busy. OK, they because they have a, a whole slew of priorities. Right. And then just, you know, taking time out of their day of, of no value to provide mentorship to others may not be the best return on their investment. It's not it's not your fault. Right. But what you want to do is try and offer value. Hey, you know, I, I'd love to kind of get lunch with you. I'll buy your lunch and then tell me how I can help you manage your property. You know, how can I help you um, with budgeting? How can I help you with lending? How can I help you and just offer some free services to folks? Um, if you want free education in this business, uh, don't just ask for a mentor, go and provide some sort of value. Um, and then people are going to give back in way more ways than just, you know, um, getting lunch or, you know, reading a book or any of those kind of things. So I definitely recommend going to meetups. There's a ton of investor meetups at this point. If there isn't one, just start one, right? Like just be the guy that starts the meetup and you can, it, it's totally cool to be the newbie and do that. That's totally fine. Um, but as you, as you get into this thing, the more people you surround yourself with. And so, uh, so, right. So war room, uh, real estate mastermind, there's a plug for Dave Perret there, but, um, uh, you know, eventually I joined a, a mastermind and then my success just took off even further, um, because I'm surrounding myself with, with veterans in real estate that, um, love to help each other succeed and are doing different things. And when you do that, once you kind of get networking more and more and you surround yourself with those types of people, you're going to find opportunities at every turn, more opportunities than you can even take. And people are like, ah, there's nothing to buy right now. There's nothing to do right now. Surround yourself with these people. And all of a sudden you will have opportunities. I'm telling you more than you can put money towards. Right. And then you're going to find money raising opportunities and you're going to find other ways to expand your, your real estate business. Yeah. Um, what are what are some specific qualities you're looking for outside of uh, your tribe of real estate investors um, on the actual team that's helping you take down the deals being agents and then lenders? What should people be looking for? Um, you you want responsive people. Um, <laughs> you, you also. Yeah, you want people who have experience in the business as much as possible. They can be new too. Um, you know, the first deal I took down was a pretty new um, agent, but he was also a real estate investor and he was willing to work with me. Right. So, um, you have to find people who will res respond and, and work hard, but at the same time, a lot of folks in that business, you know, they're, they're commission based. They're only going to get paid when you close. So you have to be mindful of their time that they have lives and families and stuff too, right? That they don't always want to show properties every single weekend to you for the next year for you to not buy something. So you have to be providing value back, which is be serious and be intentional about what you're trying to do. You know, figure out what your criteria is. It's okay to not know initially, uh, but that agent is not necessarily, or that lender is not necessarily there to teach you everything there is to know about real estate investing. They may help. They may help you analyze a property and do all those kind of things like a, like a good uh, investor friendly agent or lender is, but um, that's not their job. That's your job to know what you want, right? So um, uh, just, just a piece of advice there. I've worked with quite a lot of investors, and I will say that 90% of them are not serious, the ones that reach out, right? And it's now very easy for me to vet that. And, you know, I, I know the ones who are serious, and they are uh, my best clients and best friends. But, um, you know, don't be the 90% of people who don't know what they want, want, you, want the agent to magically poof them a deal um, and, uh, and just, you know, kind of overwork them for not a lot of value. So it's got to be a two-way street. Yeah. I know that yeah. was not the answer you were looking for. No, um, no, that's that's right. perfect because uh you know kind of your theme in both of your answers here is first and foremost in any relationship that you enter albeit we're talking about real estate here the first thing you want to do is provide value. Then the second thing is by providing value um you your results are compounded almost as an externality. Um, and, and that's something that you taught me and that's some, that's something that you carry on your sales team, on every investment team you've become a part of, 
you know, um, if you ask anyone in any of our circles who Charlie Cameron is, he's the guy that gives first. And then as a result, he's included into more spheres and grows and grows and grows. Um, uh, you're the one that told me about, uh, the go-giver or being a go-giver. Um, Great. and, and yeah, no, so that's a perfect example of how you do that in an agent client relationship. So if you're looking at building your, your pathway to wealth through real estate, um, and you are, you are working with an agent. Yeah. You need to make sure he understands the asset class I think is, is what we could sift through. Make sure you have someone that's that's competent, um, isn't just trying to make a sale. Um, but you know, as with any partnership, they won't be able to read your mind, right? No. Um, they can't no. define your buy box. You have to provide that. You have to understand what it is you're looking for, and then you have to communicate it and then execute. So it's, it's, it's truly, it's truly a partnership in my, from, from my limited experience, you know, with between agents and clients, um, it's a it's a partnership that that's more collaborative than um, than some sort of hierarchy or power structure, uh, because to be successful at, in real estate, you need a you need to have that open line and mutual understanding to to reach the the right goal because you don't want to end up in the wrong deal. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and did you do you feel like there was anything that you learned as a as a young officer, as you were progressing in your military career, that you turned around and implemented um, as you were, you know, starting and then continuing investing in real estate? Well, I would say there's kind of two things. One, the, one of the things is I was an engineer. I did a lot of, and I acquired acquisitions. Um, I did a lot of data analysis, did a lot of purchasing of weapon systems. And so numbers were a lot of what I did. Um, and so that helped me really easily in real estate is, hey, I can analyze things very, very well. I can I can create my own calculators. I can figure things out and I can on paper figure out what a deal is going to look like. Um, that wasn't directly tied to my real estate career. I will say the the you know, the other thing that was pretty darn helpful was that I was really good at um, leading teams in high pressure scenarios and and presenting to them um, to get them to come along. And so though, though, that was probably the biggest skill, right? I've, I mean, I've run multi-million dollar, tens to hundreds of million dollar programs. I've, I've, you know, ran live fire testing with, you know, manned aircraft and live missiles in the air where I've got to make calls on, on, you know, shots and terminations and things like that. And so for me, all of those things just brings my natural stress level much, much, much lower. Like it would take something catastrophic to stress me out. And so on real estate, yes, things pop up all the time. I mean, shoot, I've, I've had bed bugs. I've had floods, uh, you know, I, I, shoot, I've had a gang party uh, at, a, at a unit. Right. And so um, but all of those things don't really get to me anymore because <laughs> because of, you know, I've, I've had all the stress conditioning from the military. Plus, every time something happens in real estate, that, you know, an issue, a problem the first time is an issue the first time. But after that, it's just a problem you've already know how to solve. And so, I mean, 90 percent of, the, you know, making money in life is solving problems. Right. And so if you just know how to solve these smaller, you know, what, what feel like bigger and bigger problems initially, which then just become, hey, I already have the solution to that. Oh, throw this at it. Oh, throw this at it. You can just keep growing. Right. If if, you know, if you can just have that mindset that not a problem, I know how to deal with this. Let's put that behind me and then just keep moving. Then you can scale and be incredibly successful because nothing bothers you and you already know how to do the thing. And that's where being action oriented is key. Right. Because, you know, from what you're saying, it's pretty much um, something comes up. Roger that. Let me figure it out. And then after that. Um, you, you're familiar with the problems and the obstacles get bigger and bigger and you figure them out in a bigger way. Um, but it wouldn't have happened if you didn't just, you know, start taking steps rather than, you know, living in a world of what if, what if, what if, um, and figuring it out as you go along. Um, yeah, and I'll add to that. There's, you know, you, you don't have to do it yourself either. If you already know how mm -hmm. to solve the problem, now you can create the template 
for others that you can hire to solve the problems for you in the future. Right. Doesn't always yeah. have to be you. No, no. And uh, would you say that's kind of where your your networking in the mastermind um, helped you scale and and become more successful? Because you had you weren't in an echo chamber. You had yeah people to listen to your problems that have maybe been there before. Yeah, and um, and people who have been far further than me, right? That are willing to pull me along or throw ideas at me, or people who are in totally different niches that I don't understand or know anything about that I can learn about. And decide is that something mm. I want to get into or not? Um, probably the it and it's it is amazing these these masterminds that you can get into and, and just um, be able to surround yourself with people who are you know seven eight figure earners right and they're just in there just providing value doo -doo -doo. and you're like how do you have time for this right? Um, but one thing that I I have <clears throat> one mentality I've picked up and have learned over the past few years is that anytime someone who is where you want to be in life, let's say they're a few steps ahead, let's say they're 10 steps ahead, let's say they're a seven, eight figure earner. Anytime you get the opportunity where they ask for your advice on something, they've asked for your help, you drop everything you're doing and you say yes. And you do whatever it is because they will reciprocate that. It's so, so, so important. And it's, it's you know, you might be like, oh, I don't have time for that. Oh, I've got, you know, I've got my thing going on. No, your thing can wait because by helping them, they can help your thing grow. Um, and that's something I've, I do a lot, a lot now. <laughs> Someone asks me to be on a podcast or, or asks me to, to come teach something to their team or um, asks me to analyze a property for them that, you know, maybe they're really great at a bunch of other things. They're not great at this one thing that I can help with. I say yes, um, because I know I can, and can always kind of get a reciprocation for that at, at some point. It's not that I have to ask for something at that point, but I always say yes, because you, you never know, right? There may be an opportunity in the future where I may say, hey, Steve, um, I could really use your help on this one thing. Remember that one time I, I helped you with X, Y, Z? You'll be like, yes, absolutely. I'm in. I will help, right? And and so I just, just a just a quick tip for everybody out there. I I love that. It's, it's a really easy motto to live by. Drop everything and say yes. Um, because what seems like a small inconvenience to you, um, you'll be able to get back to whatever it is you were doing before and you will have impacted someone for the better along the way. Um, so drop everything, say yes, I love that. Um, so let's let's kind of go back to, to your story so people can learn a little bit more. Um, so you have eight units, you got to, you know, sunny, humid, alligator fields, uh, <laughs> Florida. <laughs> bears. Um, bears. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you got to the panhandle and, uh, and uh, now you're not in the military. So what happened in between that time? Um, you know, how can people who are trying to make a transition are interested in investing in real estate, you know, kind of duplicate uh, what you did? Yeah. So, um, you know, it, you got to look for ways to scale, right? It, it depends on how fast you want to do the thing. There's nothing saying you can't just buy single family homes for a few years, like the using the VA loan to buy a house at every assignment and then having that be part of your retirement plan after 20 years. That's great too. Nothing says that you have to do it my way, especially if you're very passionate about your, your job too. But um, I just wanted to look for ways to accelerate change, if you will. <laughs> it's a, the Air Force weapons motto right now, but um, I was looking for a way to kind of accelerate things and see how that went. So for me, value add multifamily looked like the thing. Now, there's going to be a theme here. I, I'm a little bit ADHD when it comes to any and all um, real estate ventures. Um, I don't know if that has held me back, as in I have a hard time focusing on one thing. Um, but I, all my things are somewhat successful, so ho hopefully that's good. But it is it is certainly challenging to jump between tasks. But you know, I started multifamily, got those eight units. Uh, partner and I bought 16 more in Ohio. PCS to Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. Beautiful here. Um, I was out of money <laughs> to buy more real estate. So I got my real estate license, <clears throat> started selling houses to investors and military families part time. Um, and uh, but that's when I joined the war room. Um, it's when I kind of started networking with more folks. And, you know, the people I was networking with were saying, hey, short term rentals cash flow is way higher 
you should look at this, especially if you self-manage. I was like, hmm, interesting. So I looked at it and said, yay, verily, we're going to try this too. And so we, we uh, bought a home down in Orlando, townhouse, short-term rental. Um, and we were like, this is amazing. Like, this, this, is, this is great. One is easy to manage, turns out. Uh, many more is not. <laughs> and um, we're like, this thing just prints money. Fantastic. And so um, I was like, what, what should I do? I got some advice from some of my mentors, and they said, you should focus on cash flow now not cash flow later. I was like, okay. So then I, you know, I'd added value to those apartments in Ohio, um, sold some 1031, the other two into two brand new build short term rentals in Nashville, um, two brand new townhomes there. And then, um, <clears throat> ended up partnering with a couple other folks, um, and purchased a short term rental in North Georgia, purchased one in, uh, Black Hawk, Colorado. Um, and all of these were just kind of, opportunities because of the network I knew. Um, Orlando was a choice. The others were just network opportunities. Hey, uh, you know, work with a couple partners. This looks like the next new Gatlinburg, LJ, um, Georgia. So we were like, we did our research, we networked with agents and we, we did the thing. And then Colorado, it's because, uh, my, my buddy and, and investing partner moved out there, Alex Schlow. Awesome dude. He, uh, he moved out there, said, guys, this is the sweetest, coolest geodesic dome ever. We should buy it. And we're like, yes, we should. And so we did, right? <laughs> Nashville, a uh, buddy of mine, Andrew Durazio, he was getting into Nashville at the time. I networked with him. We connected and he said, bro, you got to buy some of these. They're, they're just cash flowing like crazy. So I did, right? And so none of these were me like, uh, I don't know. Let me figure out. Ooh, I, eat. I just said, whatever opportunity works in cash flows is the one I'm going to take. So, um, and I, and I self-managed all of those. So uh, all from afar. And so you just kind of learn how to use tools and hire teammates and, and do those kind of things. Um, and so I've since changed <laughs> uh, strategies a little bit more. Now I'm getting more into residential assisted living, closing my second one on Monday, um, hoping to close two more this year and scale that up um, in 2024. But um, yeah, so but the theme is uh, I move around a lot, but a as you there's kind of two things that are happening. I'm sorry. I'm just rambling now. Um, no, this is exactly what we're looking for. So markets change, right? Airbnb across the board. A lot of folks are getting crushed right now because either they didn't buy right or they bought thinking that this is going to be good forever in a saturated market when guess what? It's not good forever. Money printer doesn't go burr anymore and people don't have all this discretionary spending. Uh, by the way, there's, you know, four or five X more listings. So, um, unfortunately that kind of sucks for, for a lot of folks who bought, um, at the high of the highs thinking that that income was going to be forever. Um, and so for me, just looking around over the last year and a half going, can't buy many short term rentals at cash flow. I, there are still some that will, so don't, don't lose heart. You can still buy short term rentals. Um, there are still some criteria I would buy, but, um, my, my buddy, Alex, um, and, and his buddy, Luke war room, were getting into assisted living. I was like, bro, tell me about this. And so he told me about it and I was like, wow, that sounds super interesting. Um, and they were like, well, Hey, you don't have a day job anymore. So we're inviting you to what we call a triumvirate. And, uh, you know, my value is I can help do shit during the day. So, um, uh, that's worked out great. Um, great partnership there and, um, looking to scale up with them pretty well, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the network and who you know, and um, I'm excited to get into a different asset class that cash flows a lot like short-term rentals, but with less headaches than a long-term rental. So um, very interesting niche there. Okay, I'm going to shut up That's now. That's awesome. No, no, no. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, and so dive even, even getting more specific into that, um, where were you at personally? Where were you at with your military career? What was going through your head right. as you were as you were jumping around? Thank you. You're right. I didn't answer the full question. Um, I uh, between investing going well, kind of the short term rental income and self managing that, um, as well as being an agent um, and growing an agent team and closing transactions there. You know, I was making more than the military doing part time real estate. And, so, and as a as an 04, 11 years. And so that, that to me was like the, okay, flip the switch. I'm now making more over here doing part-time work. Um, and it's taking up my nights and weekends away from my two little kids, which I really don't want to be doing anymore. Um, 
had nothing to do with the Air Force itself. I, I loved everything I did in the, in the military. Um, it just, for me and for my family situation, my wife had to be in active duty too. I think it made the most sense. Plus, I've always wanted to pursue just business and entrepreneurship. So I was like, hey, I think this is the right move. Uh, wife agreed. And so I just kind of flip-flopped. Now I'm a part-time reservist um, <clears throat> and uh, and full-time real estate everything. So I, I sell houses. Um, I run a local real estate team. I run a national real estate team. And I... Um, I invest in real estate and so, and build my own team to manage that. So, um, that, you know, for me, the decision was I'm making more from this. Now I can, I can tolerate the change and and see how it goes. Of course it was also the worst market to leave (laughs) to to, uh, go into real estate in since 2008, but that's okay. Um, things are still going just fine. So, um, you know, the ability to kind of scale with time was, was helpful. Plus I was able to, give time back to my family, um, basically limit my meetings to, to one night a week outside of daytime hours. Um, and I was able to start Skillbridge right before my daughter started kindergarten and we're within walking distance. So I, I achieved kind of my, my ultimate goal last year, which was walk my daughter to kindergarten, uh, which for me has been a game changer. Like the, the relationship building I've had just on that event alone has been amazing. That's incredible. So was it, was it, was it an accidental, like, you know, juncture in your life as in, you know, at first you had a 20 year projection of yourself. Um, Then you kept saying yes and yes and yes and yes to opportunities. And then one day you found yourself atop a new threshold and you're like, wow, I have a decision to make. Is that pretty much where you were at? That's exactly right. Um, I thought, you know, after, you know, everybody tells you, oh, you've already done 10 years. You might as well stick it out 10, right? We've all heard it. Um, for me, I was making more passively than I would have made from an 05, 20 year retirement. Right. So, so does it, does it make sense for me to stick out 10 more years for that retirement when I could be spending that time on scaling faster, creating more passive income? Like, shoot, this year alone, at the investments I'm adding um, will probably equal another 05 retirement. Okay. So, like, and, and it was really hard. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to poo-poo it, and and but I do think of things in that kind of financial lens. Is like, hey, but am I am I hurting myself by staying and and not putting my my full attention into real estate? Which really, frankly, would uh, uh, I couldn't have done much more without it really hurting my probably my my career, right? Because I I needed more time to do the things I wanted to really do and was passionate about. Did you face any obstacles as you were transitioning? Um, certain the, the the biggest one is um, pay is weird, right? As an entrepreneur, um, you know, as a real estate agent or an investor, things change every single month. Um, on the investor side, it's a little bit more stable, but you do have every now and then a property. Oh, you know, an HVAC unit went out or something, right? So I'm not going to receive any cash flow from that one this month. I will from the others, but. Um, and then on the on the sales side, of course, things ebb and flow. You'll have a crazy, amazing months, and then you have months where you have almost no commission, right? So um, that that dichotomy is kind of interesting, and managing that is interesting. Luckily, my wife is you know a, a su- successful um, military officer, so she she helps provide a little bit of stability on that front. Um, and I like to reinvest as much as I can, so that that um, that's helpful there too. Um, Sorry about the dog. (laughs) (laughs) It's all good. And uh, so do you feel... Do you feel like you had to develop a structure in order to be ready to transition then? Just have that plan in place and that expectation in mind where, hey, this is what it's going to look like. You know, what if if the individual is thinking about investing on his own, he's the sole provider for his family... Um, you know, understanding that the biggest obstacle you found was, hey, pay is going to be weird for me. Um, is it just finding a plan, knowing that yeah. as an expectation? Yeah. So I, it um, comes down to a couple things. Um, one is having a good kind of reserve foundation. You know, for me, what I do is every property has at least a 10 grand reserve fund, each property, not like a, you know, plus I have additional um 
I kind of have an umbrella reserve fund as well. And then my own personal reserve fund, right? So for me, that's very helpful. <laughs> and, and, and I don't look at it like, ooh, I, I budgeted that I was going to take out exactly this percent of cash flow each month. Durr, 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 durr. I actually just, I, I use that threshold. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The lawn guy's here and the dog thinks he's, you know, an intruder. House. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, I use that threshold for each property and just go, okay, it's, it's that time of month. Uh, let me look at the, am I above 10 grand? Great. I'm going to pull that money out and, and pay myself that. Right. Um, and so that's been pretty helpful because I do that for every single property. Boop, 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 boop. Um, as well as with my agent income, I just pay myself a steady um, W-2. And then um, from there, I reinvest as much as I can. Now, um, yeah. I will say it's, it's helpful to have multiple streams of income. So that could be a lot of properties. That could be, you know, properties and agent commission. That could be, um, you know, you could also, whatever it may be, co-host properties, for example. Um, you could have a, another side hustle. So it is good to have multiple streams of income because things ebb and flow in entrepreneurship across all businesses. So... <laughs> It's good to have options uh, where income can flow from. Yeah. Um, and, and that could be, it doesn't all have to be in the same, you know, pot. It doesn't all have to be real estate. Like you were saying, you know, you could be driving for Uber. Maybe, maybe the real, t the, the priorities of the military and military life just don't line up with your personal priorities, which is fine. Um, and you're still a nascent uh, investor. That doesn't mean you have to retire right away and stop working. You could get a W-2 just just having that plan on what your priorities are, what that end goal is. Like, you know, Charlie always, it, he if you listen to his story, he always had a vision of somewhere he would go, had passions and took advantage of opportunities and found himself in this position. Um, if you're if you're getting out, you know, just have that vision. Where are you going to go? And then what are the next steps you're going to, um, you, you have to take in order to get there. You know, one of the things that, you know, really crushes me that I see, um, in our service isn't anything wrong with the service at all, but the, the sometimes an individual will choose to stay for it in ex longer than what they had originally thought, because there was no plan at the decision point. Um, and of course life comes up and that's not everyone's situation, but, um, you know, if you could take away one thing, it's just, um, if you're taking advantage of this asset class, if you're if you're using it to build a pathway to wealth and you want to segue out of, you know, our our active duty community, make a make a roadmap for yourself. Find a network or a mentor or someone that has done it, you know, is 10 steps ahead of you, um, because this is a this is a well marked trail. Um, you yes. just need to find someone that knows where the guideposts are. Yeah, you got to create a plan and you got to work backwards from, from there. And th this is something I see very few people do. And it's it's shocking to me. You know, for me, it was it was like, hey, what is my plan? What am I trying to accomplish? OK, what are the steps to get there and where what step can I work on right now? And so many people don't break that down. Like it, even let's take real estate out of the picture. OK, let's just talk about retirement. OK, and let's say it's a full career retirement. Um and you've got your IRA or TSP or both, and that's your that's your retirement plan in your sixties. I I must have been the only uh, lieutenant I knew who was like, "Hey, this, uh, how much money do I want to? Am I going to need to live off of? Let me do some math. Boop boop boop. Okay, how much money do I need to have the account by then to to do that? Boop boop boop. Okay, how much money do I need to put in starting right now over all these years and based on what's in there to achieve that? Very simple math, by the way." Nobody does that. It was just me. It was like, okay, I got to put in this much each month. Do, 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 do. This is before I even learned about real estate, right? And then when real estate came along, I did the same thing. Okay, how do I get to, you know, whatever it was, twelve grand a month in in cash flow? That was my twenty year plan, right? Now I'm now I'm getting to I, I want to get to thirty grand a month, but you know, so um, and how do I work backwards from there? And nobody does it. I don't get it. And and I talk to a lot of people who are investing in real estate. Um, or their, you know, military careers, or they're trying to retire at some point. And I'm like, so what's, what is your plan? Why are you investing in real estate? And they're like, well, I don't know. I just, I just want to invest. I'm like, no, no, to, to figure out what your goals are. And that will tell you what you should be doing. 
right? Does this asset class meet that goal? Yes or no? That's that's a pretty easy question to answer. It's just most people, for some reason, aren't willing to do that piece. Um, I encourage you, if you're listening to this, to take a step back, write out your plan. What is your lofty goal? And work backwards from there. It's and and just break the steps down into something, um, you know, that you can that you can bite off and chew, and then just start chewing. Um, chew a little more each day, and you're going to be there before you know it. And it's it's not a, it's not hot and sexy all the time. That's a nope. process. That's a system. And yep. uh, you trusted the process, and that's what got you to where you are. Yep. You know, you saw the numbers on the Excel. It, for anyone that is unfamiliar with Charlie, Charlie is an Excel wizard. Uh, <laughs> databases and and information points, you know, on every aspect, he'll he'll amalgamate as much information as possible, and that's how you make decisions, isn't it? Yep. Yep. The word you're looking for is nerd. <laughs> Super nerd. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's uh, let's move towards the ending here, um, and I want to talk about. You told us your whole story all the way up to where you are right now, getting into um, assisted living facilities. Um, you talked about your military career and we talked about, you know, a sales team. And as people can start piecing together as they listen to your story um, and your transition now, um, you had almost like a series of dials, you know, maybe investments are over here. Your military career is over right. here. Sales is over here. Learning is over here. Um, can you tell us that story through that perspective of the dials that you had and, and work life balance, family time along the way? Yeah. So, you know, as I got more and more into real estate, more opportunities come up, more, more ways to make money, right? Not just investing in real estate, but having a real estate license, building a, a larger real estate team as an, as an income stream. Um, so you know, I was turning all those dials. Plus, I had the income from my my you know my cushy Uncle Sam job, which basically that doesn't change, right? That's just that's just a set knob there. <laughs> Even though <laughs> I was putting a lot more work into that, none of the income, you know, didn't it didn't scale, right? Uh, I think a lot of us can feel that one. Um, oh, and the more the, the better work you do, the more work you get. Shocking, right? And so, um, and I was looking at real estate, like, shoot, I put more work into selling houses or to uh, building a team and I, I make more money. And so I was like, wow, that's that's an interesting dynamic. You know, that that knob is is more exponential than this other one, which I can't even change. It only changes with time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but. I, I forgot the. <laughs> I forgot that no, was, that, uh, that, that, that story, you know, where you, where you had to, in order to get to where you are now, where you, right. you know, successfully transitioned, you're making passive income, yeah. you know, you could stop working today if something comes up with the family and focus 100% on that. But was it always that way? Or what did you have to do along your path? Yeah, it wasn't. So it wasn't set in stone. Like I was doing really well as an agent. And so, um, for me, it was like, hey, the, the combination is is much larger than my military income. It wasn't that my passive income was larger. Um, so that is something I'm still working on on a daily basis because I want to get to a point where I kind of have extreme freedom, if you will. Um, like my my life intent. So I don't have a life goal. I have an intent. And then I build the re my lines of effort that I work on based on that. And so my life intent I have it on the wall here is – Live a life overflowing with amazing moments created through massive freedom. Well, how do I create massive freedom? Um, I need to be location independent. I need to be time independent. I need to be financially independent. Um, and so leaving the military, no, I did not necessarily have enough passive income to totally replace everything. Uh, but I was okay with that because I was willing to hustle. And I think, I think that you don't have to replace everything. You can still you know, have a have side hustles like you talked about. You can get your real estate license and do that, right? There's a lot of ways that kind of align maybe with real estate in general, if that's your method for leaving the military, like, hey, I'm, I'm building this passive income stream, but I also have this active one I can work on, it can supplement, and I can use it to build this passive one up. Um, so for me now, the way I look at it um, kind of post-military, you know, <clears throat> I've, I've replaced my military income um, and then some, and now... Um, I've got a chart. I've got a, a PowerPoint slide. It's got 30 boxes on it. I want each box is, represents 1,000 semi-passive dollars a month. 
Um, all I'm doing is filling boxes. doesn't matter where it comes from. I just want to fill the box. Um, so, so there's lots of things I'm working on that could do that. For example, you know, I'm, I'm making more and more real estate agent referral checks. Cool. Let's fill in a box. You know, I could say the average is, is up another thousand dollars, fill in the box, right? It could be revenue share. It could be, I bought another residential assisted living home. Let me fill in a box. Right. And so I've just got this built out over a timeline to 2030 and I just need to fill a few boxes a year. Um, I, I'm thinking it's going to happen much faster than 2030 um, because it already is. But, you know, that's kind of my goal is, hey, when when my wife is close to retirement, I want our, our total income to be about a thousand dollars a day, which sounds ridiculous. I know. But there's not much you can't do for that. Right. Like I could take my family for the summer to Italy if I wanted on a thousand dollars a day. Too easy. Right. So that's why I'm trying to get to that point, because um, within just a few years, because my family's still young, I want to be able to live an amazing life with them while I can create these memories before they go off to, to college, before they have their own lives of their own. So um, I know that was that went a weird way. But, um, you know, I just don't overcomplicate things, I guess, is what I'm getting at. If you just want to try and leave the military, you can have part active income. It doesn't all have to be passive. And then, you know, use something like a little like, yeah, what, what are my goals? Let me draw it on a sheet. Let me put it in front of me all the time and just figure out how to fill a box. Yeah, that is, is such a beautifully simple system. You're not you're not trying to formulate an algorithm for 10 years from now. You're you're saying quite simply, this is where I want to be. And then as you find, you'll find the pieces. You have no idea where the pieces are right now. You don't know what that puzzle is going to look like when it's close, but you, you know how to identify it. It's very clearly defined. $1,000. Boom. That's a piece done. Yep. And, and before you know it, all 30 of those boxes will be filled. And, you know, it could be a totally different goal for someone else, but um, very similarly simple, right? Um, and, and that allows you, I think, to stay focused. So would you say that you're turning up your time investment more right now while, while your family's young, while, you're, while your wife is still active duty um, and, and sacrificing a little bit, but not as much as you were before while you were doing everything and then definitely not as much as you will in the future when that becomes the number one priority. Uh, I will never not hustle. I'm just not, I'm just built that way. I just enjoy it. Whether I'm making money or not, I like working on things and, and growing by doing new things. Um, so you're always gonna see me evolving in some way, whatever that may be. Maybe I'm gonna develop an app, who knows, right? So um, the, fu the future is, uh, the world is your oyster, right? And, and so, we, we entrepreneurs, we just like growth. That's ultimately what it comes to. I like growing. I like learning new things. I like tinkering myself on these new things when, yes, I know others should do my video editing. I know others should do this for me because I suck at it. But I still like to learn those things and see how I can implement them. So for me, I'm never going to stop. But I would like the ultimate flexibility to take a month off and go overseas or, you know, hey, I want to we like to go skiing. One week a year, we're going to go do that. I want to take my kids to Disney World. I'm going to do that, right? I just want that ultimate flexibility to do anything. I am definitely not working as long hours as I was military and real estate. Um, I'm working far less nights and weekends, which is really what, what has helped a lot with kind of family time. That has decreased stress in my household significantly, right? Now, I'm yes, sometimes I'm Mr. Mom. Uh, you know, I, I take the kids to... To, to activities and, and things like that. And that great. That's for me, that's what I want to do. I want to spend more time with them because I, I don't know what the statistic is, but there's some massive dichotomy for, you know, when your kids are in the household that you spend, you know, 90% or 95% of the time you're going to spend with your kids is when they're in the house. Right. So shoot for me, I, I've only got, you know, 13 years left with my daughter before she's gone and, and flown the coop. And that's that, that's terrifying. So yes, I want to take every opportunity I can right now. And if that means that my, the, the efforts I'm working on, my lines of effort are not moving as fast as I want. That's okay. Because guess what? When, when they're gone, I can work on them far more if I want, or I don't have to. Um, but it's, it's just really important to me. And I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just family's very important to me. My kids are very important to me. And uh, that's really where I want the, the, my time outside of, regular business hours when they're at school to be focused on. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and, and I think you could see that transition um, where you, or actually it's, it's, it's an iteration of the same sort of process that you have with all of your goals. And you identified a very simple thing. Hey, I have this golden era of time in my, in my children's lives and I want to be there for that question. How do I do that? Inform lines of work or lines of effort. And then, you know, result is where you are. Um, you know, before it was, before it was, you know, developing income to invest, uh, scaling those investments, then transitioning out of the day job and putting more effort into part-time, but constraining that part-time effort to when my kids are no longer available for me to create those memories with them. And then fast forward, you know, into your future, there's a very also defined, um, you know, intent uh, to, to even scale that time that you're spending with them even more. Um, so all of that to say, and to, to demonstrate with a very tangible example is, uh, it's your, your time is a resource and maybe it is a zero sum game, but you're, as long as you have clarity in yourself, you can shift the dials according to what your priorities are at whatever season in life that you are as you transition to different seasons in your life. Um, and that clarity is so important. And for, for those thinking about transitioning out of the military, it's especially important, which is, which is you know, kind of an, an unintended huge value add uh, as far as a community that this, this episode can reach. Um, because we, we highlighted Charlie's pathway to doing exactly that. Um, and, uh, so in, in wrapping that up, the, the key takeaways from here is, uh, one, surround yourself with the team, surround yourself with the network. Um, and when you, when you do that, when you find those individuals that are five, 10, eight steps or eight, 10 steps ahead of you, um, and they ask you for advice or they, they toss a rope down and say, hey, come up here. I need some help really quick. Drop everything and say yes to it. Um, look, look for ways to accelerate change towards the goals that you have or the intent that you set for your life. And keep that intent simple. Keep it, uh, keep it well-defined because you don't know what that future is going to look like. You don't know what the puzzle is. You know what the pieces should be, right? Um, keep evolving. And identify a plan, uh, and again, just keep it simple for yourself and your in your family and those priorities. Did I miss anything, Charlie? Any any last no, words there? No. Yeah, and just at the end of the day, just be happy with what you got and be happy with what you accomplished. But you know, it's it's okay if something has to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. And give first. Yeah. Give first. Go read the Go Giver. That's yeah. A mandatory reading for everybody listening. Absolutely. Well, thanks for your time today, Charlie. Um, where can people go out and find you? Yeah, a couple different places. I mean, you can look me up on, on Google. If you search Charlie Cameron Military Home Team, you'll find kind of my local real estate team. Um, you can also find my blog, Agent Wealth Hustle, where I help real estate agents grow and achieve mm -hmm. financial freedom along the way. Um, kind of a lot of the stuff we talked about, but geared towards uh, uh, real estate agents, but yeah, look me up on, on Facebook or, or shoot me an email. Um, I'm sure all that info will be in the show notes, but, uh, thanks for having me on here, dude. It's, it's been fun. Yeah. Great conversation. And it's always, you know, do your best and be good, uh, to everyone you beat me. Cause you never know where the opportunities are going to come from. All right. Until right. next time. See you guys.